Hey, it's me, Cisco Morris. Here's what's coming up on Garden with Cisco. It's rose pruning season. Learn how to prune your difficult characters with help from the experts at the Seattle Rose Society. Visit a local place turning knees. Oh my <laughs> gosh! Ah! Into the best organic compost around. We're turning chia seeds into a nutritious breakfast treat and plant a color combo in your winter garden that doesn't have one bit of green in it. All this is coming up right now on Gardening with Cisco. Cisco Morris. And I'm Megan Black. Welcome to Gardening with Cisco. Today, isn't it gorgeous out here? I just love it. We're at the Highline SeaTac Botanical Garden because we are going to learn a little bit about roses from our friends at Seattle Rose Society. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys. Hey. So we're going to visit with them coming up a little bit. Oh, great. Well, tis the season for pruning your roses. And we <laughs> kicked it off by taking our Falcos to my favorite flora bunda, hot cocoa. So right around this time of year, when it's freezing cold outside, I want a little hot cocoa. How about you? <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Well, we got one right here because that's the name of this rose. It's a hot cocoa. Uh, I love the name of the rose. Me but too. Look at all the leaves that are starting to sprout out. We are yeah, getting towards spring. It's we're, time. We're kicking and screaming, but we're getting there. Uh, we are. So we need to cut back this baby. Yeah, we got to prune it down. You know, in a lot of the books, tell you to prune your rose down to six right inches here. from the ground. You cut these down too hard every year, they store energy in their canes. So if we cut those canes down, down, down every year, we'll weaken the rose. And this is a strong, good right, rose because we don't overdo it. So where do we start? Let's get going. Okay, let's get going on this. I think I'm going to use some of the heavy artillery here just so I don't have to get in there so much. I think the first thing we should do, anything that looks dead, like okay. here's one dead right there, Megan. Right. I'm just going to go ahead and chop that guy off. Ah. Easier said than done. And I think uh, we've cut some of the cross ones. Now we just lower it. Okay. Now you try to do it two thirds of the way to the ground. And then you find an outward facing ah, bud. So that's, got, that's, that's right. That's it. So we have a bud right here that's heading out to the street. Yeah. Yep. And that's why you cut to the outward facing buds because this is the way it's going to grow. You don't want it going back in the middle, crowd in the middle. That no. causes nothing but trouble. One thing a lot of people say that you should only leave like five canes. That's right. a bunch of uh, bahui, you know. Leave as many healthy canes as you've got. If two are really crowding each other, pick the best one. But, but they got to crowd each other pretty bad before I'll take out a whole cane, unless it's sick or something. The main reason for that. One other thing we'd normally do, just so people know, let's say I'm cutting this bud right here, let's say. Yeah. You always cut kind of on a, uh, Angle, yeah, like, like that. that. Cut away from it. Yeah, because that way you're not harming that bud. And once we get through, we're good. We should also point out, though, that we are wearing really thick gloves. Yeah. Rubber gloves, leather gloves, I mean, so that if you get pricked with some of these prickers, it can cause a fungus, and it is excruciatingly painful. Yeah, it's, and you can end up in the hospital. Right. If, so you so don't want to do that. It is that serious that you wear good gloves and yeah. have good tools. But That's right. We are right. almost done here. Hey, we're this. almost done. It, so and much the, slop from my other. There's just something about pruning a rose that just makes it's you... It's kind of fun, isn't well, it? Well, and it just makes you think, yes, we will get through this winter. Yes, spring really is going to come. And this uh, hot cocoa is one of the nicest roses I own. It is, it's tough. It doesn't get much disease. And it is so pretty. It has the neatest look and flowers you've ever seen in your life. So we're just about there, Megan. And I shall say yes. We How are looking that? good, and Look just that. like that, we're ready for summer. <laughs> <laughs> summer? What happened to spring? <laughs> I know, I'll take spring at this point, but summer isn't looking too bad oh, right man, about that now. That sounds nice to me right Get now, out too. and prune your roses. So I do not own a rose myself, but after 12 years of gardening next to you, I can 
prune a mean flora bunda, but I also think we need to tackle climbing roses. Yeah, and those are a little trickier, but that's why we've got these nice folks from the <laughs> Seattle Rose Society here. We'll talk to them later, but first, take a field trip to Ole Mountain Compost and see how they turn rotten fish into fine organic compost. Also ahead, we're making something that's a flashback to the 70s. Welcome back to Gardening with Cisco from the Highline SeaTac Botanical Garden. Megan, yes. remember last year when I got to go to Ole Mountain Fish Compost and help them make their compost? I think boys and their toys was my comment. You were like a kid in a candy store with that heavy equipment. They got some new machines, some real honkers that I got to drive them. Oh la la. Go to their facility in Belfair is becoming an annual tradition. Now you tried some of our fish compost on your plants this season. How did they do? I totally loved it. No odor. It looked fantastic and my plants grew like crazy. Great stuff. Hey Cisco, what do you say you uh, get on the machines here? Hey Robbie, oh. can you take Cisco and show him how to run the truck? Oh, boy. okay, yeah. All right. Can you, can you okay, get up on the Robbie, truck? Show me out, man. Okay, you go. All right, let's go. Go ahead, Cisco. All right, Robbie. Here he goes. You, you showed me Rob. how to do it, man. Remember to put your seatbelt on. There you go. <laughs> all right, good job. You're all set, Cisco. Go ahead and go. Okay, over and out. Remember, Cisco, no speeding now. Okay, here we go. Go ahead and bring her back. All right. Woo -hoo -hoo. Five, four, three, two, one. That's perfect right there, Cisco. Now what I want you to do is do the parking brake. Come on up here in the excavator and you're gonna run the excavator. All right. I'm getting the hang of it here. He's a lot better than he was last year. You know, you know, he's uh, he's a natural. I really do. Don't you think he's a natural? You don't? Oops. How do you like my new fish heads that just came in? Oh my gosh! Look at all those fish heads. Well, you know, they're 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 perfect for salmon compost. Where does all that fish come from? Well, we've got, you know, we've got the hatcheries, we've got the growers, we got onshore, offshore. You know, case in point, there was that truck that, that on 101 that dumped its load. We get that. We're kind of like bottom feeders. You think these are neat? Yeah. Come here. Come on. Come oh, on. Come la, la. Now, don't get scared. Ah! Yeah! Oh, my <laughs> gosh! Ah! Look, look at, at that baby! That thing. Isn't that cool? Holy and look cats! At, look at his brother! But what would have happened to all these things if you didn't take them, turn them into compost? Well, they unfortunately they used to just let us let them settle to the bottom of the Puget Sound estuaries and whatnot, and we got oxygen to please. So it's a benefit. We're recycling a waste product that used to pollute the Puget Sound. So you're not only making great compost with these guys, you're helping fight pollution, helping our environment. Oh, absolutely. Hi, Cisco. <laughs> I'm your friend. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I consider you, you're sort of the chef of compost. Well, yeah, that's, I, thank you. That's a hell, heck of a comment there. <laughs> but, you know, or what you can call us is a little old winemakers. Uh, yeah. Because you know, every year we make a batch. So the question everybody, you know, wants to know is, you know, are we here to stay? Yes, we are. Yeah, I can tell from looking, you've got lots of compost. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for showing me how to drive that truck today. I really appreciated that. Megan, mm. wait till you see what Bob made for me. Oh, la, la, For you or your giant out. twin? <laughs> That's pretty it's cool. It's a little 
cold. It's big for me. A little Carhartt outfit. Yeah. You ain't getting cold. I, oh my I gosh. I am an official only mountain fish compost maker now. And I'm glad to say you have no fishy odor. Oh yeah, well wait till <laughs> I'm wearing this. I could roll around in that fish, no sweat. I kind of think they mean the compost. Oh. <laughs> no fishy odor, yes. Yeah. So if you would like to find out where you can get only mountain fish compost, we'll put a link at king5.com. Call the store locations. Welcome back to Gardening with Cisco from the Highline Sea Tech Botanical Garden here. You know, Cisco, I know you're into health food. And there's this new seed out on the market that some tout as a superfood. You know what it is? Poppy seed. Not quite. Chia seed. Chia? You mean like you put on a chia pet? Cha 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 chia. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Except this is the kind that you eat. And Lynn Via, of course, she found a way to use that in a fantastic granola. It is absolutely delicious. Lydia, walk it in today. This is like everything that I love. I know you I do. Eat, I eat the, the chia and the flax and the quinoa and nuts every single day. And uh, so you have a new way to eat them. Yeah, well, a new old way. Or an old new way. <laughs> so we're going to make granola. Okay, the first time I made granola, I was in the seventh okay, grade. Not your grandma's A couple granola. of years ago, just two or three years ago. Um, however, things have changed. There's new fun stuff, <laughs> right? Years, like you said. Imagine. Yeah. Yes. Like the chia and the yeah. flax. So this stuff. chia yeah. thing. It is taken off. It's like the new yep. it food. Yep. Tell Let's me about mix it. it together and we'll talk about it. Okay. Okay. First of all, yeah, we got chia and flax. Lovely. And th this is the only thing I didn't recognize. Those are buckwheat groats. Oh. Yeah. Buckwheat groats. Yeah. Sometimes called kashi. And those okay. are actually softer than they look. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you eat? Do you cook them? Just try it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Crunchy. Kind of. Yeah. Yummy. Yeah. And they just like fall apart in your yep. mouth. Uh, these are gluten-free oats. Oh, nice. And you can use any kind of rolled grain. We carry a whole bunch of great rolled okay. grains. Some chopped almonds. Lovely. Quinoa. I love the I quinoa. Know. And you, you'd think like quinoa would be a little too crunchy for this. No, it comes Nothing out yet. perfect. Granola, right? too crunchy. Right. Pumpkin seeds. And sunflower, sunflower seeds. seeds. Yep. Oh, it's so earthy and healthy. It's I gorgeous. love it. So we're going to bind that together with a couple of fun things. A little bit of maple syrup. Okay. And you can use honey or brown rice syrup or whatever you like. Just you want to get a little sweetener. Maple and this syrup. also gives it a little caramelization and makes it turn into kind of clusters, mm -hmm. which we like. Uh -huh. And then this is coconut oil. Oh. I am doing everything that's low heat with coconut, coconut oil. oil. Yeah, love it, love it, love it. So extra virgin, extra health properties with yes. it as well. It's really a very healthy cholesterol for your cholesterol. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Okay. okay, go ahead and stir that all up. Oh, nice. add a little bit of salt there. Okay. Yep. Good and salt. then uh, we're gonna just put this into oh, a I'm nice liking it already. slow oven, about 300 degrees. Okay. And then we're gonna. Uh, Cook it for 10 minutes, stir it, cook it for another 10, and then we're going to come back and okay. add some I'm coconut. I'm sorry, that looks You're good having right She's there. Having a good yeah. time. No I doubt. Know. I am loving okay. this. All right. So Go ahead and pour easy. that on there for me. Okay. A little parchment paper yep. so it doesn't stick. And then when you spread that out, Megan, what you want to do is you want to kind of make sure that you keep it in a relatively even group. Okay. If there's any little bits and pieces that fly off to the sides, they're going to burn. Okay. Is that enough? Yeah. That okay. looks perfect. Perfect. Okay. So slow oven. See you in a minute. Okay. Oh, Something's smelling good. Okay. Ooh. Hot, hot pan. Be careful. Look so, that. Megan, this is cooked for about 20 minutes. Okay. I stirred it once okay. in the interim. And now we're going to add a couple of things that only need a little bit of cooking time. Okay. So, some fresh, uh, fresh dried cranberries. Cranberries. Yes. And then some uh, flaked coconut. Now, is this sweetened? That is not sweetened. Okay. And you can use a finer grate if you like, but I like the big little, chunks of no. coconut Especially in there. Especially because it's a little toasted. Exactly. Yeah. And with that coconut oil that's in there already. Oh, that's wonderful. Flavors. Oh my gosh, yeah. it's beautiful yeah. too. So it'll um, turn into almost like candy. Oh darn, yeah. that sounds good. Okay, so that how long does this go back in for? Yeah. Now what you want to do is just real quick, just kind of tighten those, oh, up, tighten those edges up I a little bit. Me. So me. Um, 10 more minutes and then it's done. And then we'll let it cool and then okay. we'll taste it. Isn't that fun? That is Gorgeous. Okay, see the coconuts nice and brown. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. Now that's going to need to cool. Okay. And so I made another batch for you so you get a chance Yay. to taste. And I wanted to tell you, um, earlier we were talking about the chia seeds, yes. and I wanted to mention we've got all kinds of information on our website. Karen Gaudet just wrote an article, How to Eat Chia Seeds. Nice. So okay. you can check that out. Perfect. Yes. It is the it food. It is. So now we get to have okay, a Okay, now you get to try. Yep. And look at this little perfect action. Yep. Cute. So you got, uh, you know, just a snack, or, or in my case, 
Mm. That crumbled on me. I know, that's oh okay. Oh my gosh, that is fabulous. It's intended to crumble. Uh, and you know, I can taste even a little bit of salt in there. That is great. So, you know, mm. um, granola oh. makes a comeback. It does. Look so now nice. I think we should go do some macrame. Absolutely. Let's go. <laughs> okay, all right. After I eat this. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to Gardening with Cisco from the Highline SeaTac Botanical Garden. Okay, now we're yes. closing in on the end of winter, uh -huh. but that doesn't mean we can't have some great color in our garden. You know, you were telling me that we were going to plant a combination with gold, pink, and black plants. I almost didn't believe you, but over the years I have learned we're going to plant this combination that really will have people talking. So believe it or not, this plant here only looks great in the winter time. Isn't it unbelievable? I know, it's a lodgepole pine. Yeah, kind? Chief Joseph lodgepole, lodgepole pine. Isn't it gorgeous? Yep, and you want the lodgepole pine because it doesn't burn. Look oh, at that. Oh, it's bright. And what happens oh. in the summer that makes it a dud? Oh, it turns green. It's still cute. It's just cute. a green pine. Yeah, it's all right. It's still cute. <laughs> but you want to match it with some of these heathers, right? Yeah, because these heathers... This is firefly. There's a whole bunch of different right. ones that keep this red color all winter long. In summer, it'll turn green and then it blooms. And this winter's dark when you red. Want something, you know. So we want to strategically put these babies around. Yep, we want to locate them where you know they're going to play a key role. Okay. And you so, always just hope there's nothing already under there. <laughs> and you know, right now during the winter time is a really good time to come out or look out at your garden through the window. I prefer rather than in the rain. <laughs> but and find out what's lacking. What what's lacking in that winter garden that you want to improve, right? Because everything's pretty much died back. That's right. And and, you know, I planted this pine and I was really proud of it and I loved it. But then I looked out at it all winter with nothing by it. And I thought, my gosh, I could do something so much showier here. You are just not giving it just I, I just, I wasn't doing it, you know. And one thing about these heathers, they need full sun. But, wow. Now, one thing I notice over here is you've got, like... Gee, you think I we're doing something with some black monograph? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, we got to divide those. I think that'll look so cool. Stuck in, with in this. there. Yeah, and once you know, again, you don't have to be too... No, they're one of the easiest plants to divide. Why do you pay $10 for the littlest pot just, of this stuff? Just buy it and then let it That's go. That's right. Now, this burned a little bit in the winter, but it'll come right back. It'll look great in no time. Here, let's see if I can find a good spot for one more chunk. Oh, and see how this root, I just pulled up this root from yeah. something. Whenever that happens, go ahead and cut it back right where it comes out of the ground. Oh. Now that'll split up and keep growing, but if you leave it, it might die. Oh, because it'll get rot or something yeah. in it? Awesome. So a little black mondo grass to yeah. throw in there, and those don't get too tall. It just adds no, a nice contrast. No, that'll just add this nice contrast. Give it that. I love black in the garden. I think it it goes with any color. That's one of the amazing things about black. So now we just have to wait till next winter to enjoy your combination when they're big. Yeah. Oh man. Look <laughs> at me thinking ahead. Oh jeez. Well already it looks pretty it cool. Does. Are you happy? A little, little bit Chief happier Joseph? with a few friends. <laughs> That's for Heathers sure. Heathers and some black mondo grass. Oh, it's just the colors. Go find some beautiful colors and have fun. Look at how much cooler it already looks. It does. So that tree is a Chief Joseph lodgepole pine. I love to live and tweedle out of that tree. you got to get one. Now have I got a treat for you. Jeff Wyckoff. Hey, it's, you are the pruning expert of all times when it comes to roses, and I understand you're going to teach me how to prune a climbing rose. That's right. So a climbing rose is supposed to climb. We have these nice arches here, and you want all the canes to go that way. So the things that stick out like this, you might as well just take out completely. Have pruners. Way. We'll travel. I'm ready. Okay. Go. So this guy's looking pretty old to me, and that one there, so yeah. what Take do you think? Right, right at the bottom. All righty, here you go. Nothing to it. Oh, getting it out of there could be yeah. a challenge. <laughs> you know, doesn't this just give you the feeling that spring's coming? Yeah, yeah, the sap is rising, and the roses and the gardeners at the same time. Ah, go for it. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Gotta be tough. Damn right. All right. I don't take anything from you, Rose. That's right. Wow. It's already looking a lot better. <laughs> hey, man. We're getting there. You're the best. I just <laughs> learned from the true expert. Thanks so much, Jeff. Thank you, Cisco. 
nothing like Cisco pulling a little of the weight. Oh. <laughs> Doesn't happen very often. I kind of like that. If you'd still like to learn a little bit more about pruning your roses, the Seattle Rose Society will be holding a demonstration March 9th. Grab your pruners, your gloves, and come on down and learn. Yeah, and the Seattle Rose Society is having all kinds of great events to celebrate the centennial. We'll put a link to their website on our website. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Have a great weekend. Hey, and get out there and prune your roses. It'll make you think spring. Oh, la, la. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Bye.